All right, you guys, are you ready for it? Are you ready to see it? After much hype, now finally, we get to see what Tucker Carlson has been blathering about. This is episode one of the Tucker Carlson Show, published at exactly 3 p.m. PST uh, on Twitter. In Elon's ongoing effort to push advertisers away from the site by making it a clearly far-right platform, uh, you know, uh, we, we now have this after he got kicked out of Fox News for what, what must have been one of any number of reasons. Apparently, there were like a million reasons to kick him out. So, what is he going to say here? Well, my personal guess is basically nothing, which is usually the case with him. Let's find out. It looks like somebody blew up the Kokovka Dam in southern Ukraine. Oh my god, he's actually gonna do a news thing. Okay, sure, you know what? Let's, let's, let's find out. The rushing wall of water wiped out- Also, copying me? I covered this. Copying me? Out ...entire villages destroyed a critical hydropower plant and as of tonight, puts the largest nuclear reactor in Europe... Vosh clone. They say this guy's racist. Vosh clone. ...in danger of melting down. So if this was intentional, it was not a military tactic. It was an act of terrorism. The question is, who did it? Well, let's see. The Kokovka Dam was effectively Russian. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been, for the last 240 years, home of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has... Well, off the bat, this is already pretty... <laughs> pretty boring. Um, is he, is he really gonna try to do, like... Is he, is he, are we really do, gonna do the whole, um, like, pretending to be a news show thing? Like he's all dressed up, like it's a real show? Okay, I mean. Considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate as a test strike. So really, once the facts start coming in. What, what, what? government has considered destroying it. In December, the Washington Post quoted a Ukrainian general saying his men had fired American-made rockets at the dam's floodgate as a test strike. So really, once the facts start coming in, it becomes much less of a mystery what might have happened to the dam. Any fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up. What a surprise he would come to that conclusion. What, what is this? Ukraine general damn test strike oh it's it's already on newsweek tucker carlson's thing tucker carlson floats there okay what well, yeah so december report is this it okay damn Kovalchuk considered flooding the river. The Ukrainians, he said, even contested a test strike with a high Mars launcher on one of the floodgates at the Nova Kokova Dam, making three holes in the metal to see if the Dnieper's river or water could be raised enough to stemmy Russian crossings, but not flood nearby villagers. Okay. So, that means they des destroyed it? Is that it? Is that true? Okay, a high, Mar a high Mars rocket can't destroy a dam. At least certainly not in the fashion that it was. That's why I said you would need saboteurs. So just like seven months ago, one guy said they shot a rocket at it, therefore they destroyed it? Okay, yeah, one guy. Just as you would assume they blew up one Nord guy. Stream, the Russian natural gas pipeline last fall. And in fact, the Ukrainians did do that, as we now know. It's not like- Do we know that? <laughs> Has that been confirmed that they did that? I don't know why I'm asking. Vladimir Putin is anxious to wage war on himself. Oh, but that's where you're wrong, Mr. and Mrs. Cable News consumer. Vladimir Putin is exactly that sort of man, the sort of man who'd shoot himself to death in order to annoy you. We know this from the American media, which wasted no time this morning in accusing the Russians of sabotaging their own infrastructure. It's Ukrainian dam. What? 
I like how he's so pro-Russian that he hypes up his show on Twitter, and his first episode, he immediately starts uh, spinning lies to defend Russia, going so far as to essentially argue the idea that the dam was Russia's anyway? Like, they'd just taken it? Bill Crystal, the man who once told us that Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11, immediately denounced Putin as a war criminal and even more savagely compared him to Donald Trump. The rest of the pundit class made similar clearly coordinated noises. Putin did it! Putin did it! And their reasoning was simple. Putin is evil, and evil people do evil things purely for the dark joy of being evil. In this specific case, Putin attacked- I mean, that, that, the, the funny, like, I could argue that they did it to try to, like, impede a counteroffensive, but in this case, that's literally Russian doctrine, so, yeah. That, that's actually, yeah, no, that, you don't, you don't need to, like, well, actually, that one, that is actually completely true. ...himself, which is the most evil thing you can do, and therefore perfectly in character for a man that evil. That was their explanation. No one who's paid to cover these things seemed to entertain even the possibility it could have been the Ukrainians who did it. No chance of that. Ukraine, as you may have heard, is led by a man called Zelensky. And we can say for a dead certain fact... I think the thing that bothers me the most about watching Tucker is the fact that he basically does baby talk. Um, like, the way he talks and the way he structures his segments, perfect for the IQ of a conservative, is he does this, no, 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 do they say this, but no, like, everything he says is so overacted and so deliberately led to the conclusion that he's meant to get you to arrive at. There's not even, like, a, a pretense of, well, think about this for a second. And it always has to be dressed in this, you know, everyone, the media, the mainstream, everyone is just it's fun the funny thing is is like he is mocking the mainstream for calling putin evil when that's the only explanation he has for how everyone but him discusses issues like every segment of tucker carlson's is him going basically literally everyone is lying to you about everything all the time because they're evil and you can tell that they're lying to you because it's ridiculous that putin would be evil you know it's broken conspiracy brain shit. Yeah, but it goes beyond that because it's not actually discussing conspiracies. It's more like the aesthetic or like the diet flavor of conspiracies, you know? It's it's conspiracism that's been distilled and, and put in another drink. It's not actual conspiracism because he's not actually suggesting a conspiracy. He's just, uh, you know, gesturing at one. The fact that he was not involved, he couldn't have been. Zelensky is too decent for terrorism. Now, you see him on television, and it's true you might form a different impression. Sweaty and rat-like. <laughs> wow! Holy shit! Uh, to a Jew. Wow, okay. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Damn, that's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, tell us how you really feel. Couldn't do that on Fox. Truly incredible stuff. I'm proud of you that you never said rat-like on Streamwash. Well, I've called Pete Buttigieg rat-like, but he physically looks like one, so that's that's not even remotely the same thing. It's just like he's he's he he spends like two minutes defending Putin, and then when it comes time to like talk about Zelensky, he's like, ah, yes, Zel like he might as well be rubbing his hands together, like Zelensky, the Jew, he looks like a rat. Like it, it's so like just immediately with no subtlety, probably because he's only got ten minutes here, not like the full like hour program he's used to. So he has to distill it into um, the shortest possible. A comedian time. turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians, a friend of BlackRock, but don't believe your own eyes. Actually, wait, I'm, wait, what? Like a kid involved, he couldn't. Now you see him on television, and it's true you might form a different impression. Sweaty and rat-like, a comedian turned oligarch, a persecutor of Christians. Oh, um, he's actually unironically doing the like Jew thing. Like, like, uh, like unambiguously, he's just like doing. Yeah, this is just Jake Ewing. A friend of BlackRock, but don't believe your own eyes. Actually, Mr. Zelensky is a very good man, the best, really. As George W. Bush once noted, he is our generation's Winston Churchill. Of all the people in the world, our shifty, dead-eyed Ukrainian friend in the tracksuit is uniquely incapable of blowing up a dam. He's literally a living saint, a man in whom there is no sin. 
That's why Lindsey Graham is so attracted to him. They're just two good people hanging out together and being good. And like all good people, when they meet in person, they spend a lot of time talking about killing people and laughing like friends do. Here's the pair last week. It, 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 he literally is just saying over and over again, like, dirty Jew, dirty Jew. I, it's actually kind of insane. Yeah, like, li like he's not even discuss he's not talking about anything other than, like, listing the adjectives that a JQer would. That's pretty crazy. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's... The Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent, Graham says. A smile spreads across his thin, quivering lips as he forms the words. He looks like a starving man contemplating a breakfast buffet. The aroma of death has aroused Lindsey Graham. Thanks so much, replies Zelensky. He feels the same way. See, there's no Does anyone else feel like this is evoking most deliberately the tone of a 4chan post? No, like, like really. The uh, the author presupposes the positions of the reader, so it's mostly just a way of evoking bigotry and, like, uh, grotesque imagery as directly as possible. I wonder who's writing this for him, because he doesn't have the same team. He's gone from Fox News. I imagine some people left with him, but... There's nothing dark here. It's just two middle-aged guys celebrating the killing of a population. They don't seem like the kind of people... Well, it's... I mean, the Russians are literally invading... So it would be invading soldiers. No, note how Tucker Carlson will refer to immigrants in America as an invasion, even legal ones, because he's talked about um, the uh, 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 changes to immigration law leading to less white people in the country as an invasion. But it's a population when it's Russian soldiers storming across the border. People who'd enjoy flooding villages or starting a famine. And in any case, who cares if they are? It's really not your business. Your job is to support Ukraine. Watch Nikki Haley, a Republican candidate for president, explain this principle on CNN. A win for Ukraine is a win for all of us. And for them to sit there and say that this is a territorial dispute, that's just not the case. To say that we should stay neutral, it is in the best interest of America. It's in the best interest of our national security for Ukraine to win. We have to see this through, we have to finish it. Okay. See, it's very easy to understand. Okay. It is vitally important for you to support Ukraine because it's necessary for Ukraine to be supported by you. Your support is mandatory. What? What? I. It's genuinely incredible to me. I don't. I don't know. Like every every time a liberal or a lefty or whoever else gets up and decides that day to treat conservatives like they're human beings with the same intellectual capabilities as us that's an act of charity on their part genuinely how does a person watch this and like follow it at all like how does anyone watch this and go like um yeah or like this is this is a logical train of thought that is being followed uh effectively i am i'm being educated and enriched until it's finished, whatever it is, and whatever that means. It is the war that Russia waged against Ukraine. That's the it. So shut up and support Ukraine, or else you're in trouble. Back when they still taught lot. No, no, no. She's just saying we should do this. She's not saying you're in trouble if you don't do this. That's not how that works. Statements like this were known as tautologies. Something is true because it is. The more you repeat it, the truer it becomes. It's a self-reinforcing reality. There was a time when tautologies were considered illegitimate arguments, not to mention hilariously. See, like, this is what I mean. Like, this means nothing. The person says, hey, we should do this thing, it'd be good. And Tucker's like, wow, we should do it because it would be good. And it's good because we should do it, no doubt. Tautologies used to not be accepted. They want you to believe this. Like, it's, it's, but well, conservatives love this. They love this shit. Stupid. Only dumb people talk like that. Now everybody in power talks like that. Diversity is our strength. Trans women are women. Zelensky is Churchill. It's all self-evidently true. That's not, that's not what a tautology is. That's, that's not... That's not the definition of a tautology. It's, it's, those are just statements. 
people have always made. Doesn't need an explanation and don't ask questions. Sound familiar? Of course it does. That's the path they're Stalin. serving us day after day in steaming lumpy portions. By this point, it's possible that American citizens are the least informed people in the world. Your average yak herder in Tajikistan knows who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. It's <laughs> is that is that so? Average what? Average yak herder. Obvious. Does he think some skinny dude in a dress is actually a girl? <laughs> Come on. That idea would never occur to him. You've got to be lied to at if it was if it was 15 years ago, Tucker Carlson would be earnestly arguing that a uh, goat herder in Tajikistan would probably think that his own goat is a woman and a uh, viable sexual partner, or at least an Afghani, uh, um, no Afghan uh, a goat herder or whatever else. So, you know, it's like he he is shockingly racist, but you know, certain things take priority over others full volume over a period of years in order to reach conclusions like that. And of course, we have been. The media lie. They do. But mostly they just ignore the stories that matter. What's happened to the hundreds of billions of U.S. dollars we've sent to Ukraine? No clue. Who are... Uh, we, didn't, we didn't literally send them money. We sent them money worth of equipment. And the equipment can be seen in videos where they're fighting Russians. Organized those BLM riots three years ago. No one's gotten to the bottom of that. What exactly happened on 9-11? Well, it's still- Oh my God. Wow, he getting booted off Fox News certainly did take the chains off of him. Holy shit. Do you think he's gonna make like a dancing Israelis comment? Jesus Christ. All right, that bumps it up. Classified. How did Jeffrey Epstein make all that money? How did he die? How about JFK? And so endlessly on. JFK? Remember what I said about the vague, uh, uh, consp I mean, I know his answer to all of these things are the Jews. I mean, Jeffrey Epstein was literally Jewish. So I guess, how did it, how did you, if you, if you think that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself, the answer to how did he die actually can be sincerely answered with the Jews. Besides that though, yeah, it's all completely unhinged. Yeah, JFK. Not only are the media not interested in any of this, they are actively hostile to anybody who is. In journalism, curiosity is the gravest crime. Yesterday, for example, a former Air Force officer who worked for years in military intelligence came forward as a whistleblower to reveal that the U.S. government has physical evidence of crashed non-human made aircraft. Oh well my God. Hey, guys, remember 20 years ago where Uf UFO cranks couldn't, like, also be guaranteed neo-Nazis? ...of the bodies of the pilots who flew those aircraft. The Pentagon has spent decades studying these otherworldly remains in order to build more technologically advanced weapons systems. Okay, that's what the former intel officer revealed, and it was clear he was telling the truth. In other words, UFOs are actually real, and apparently so is extraterrestrial life. Now we know. In a normal country, this news would qualify as a bombshell. Uh, so, uh, so I'll do the UFO thing next, but like, uh, obviously it's not, yeah. The story of the millennium, but in our country, it doesn't. The whistleblower's account ran on a technology website called The Debrief, which you've probably never heard of. The Washington Post had that story, but decided not to run it. The New York Times, meanwhile, just pretended it never happened. On the front page of the New York Times website this morning, there were five stories about Ukraine, as well as four stories apiece about Donald Trump, trans people, and climate change, the usual lineup. There was nothing at all about how an alien species is flying hypersonic aircraft over our city. <sighs> So the, the, what's interesting is that I guarantee you the script, like the teleprompter that he's reading from, all of this bit we're listening to right now, this was pre-written and they added the damn part at the beginning, you know, which like, I guess allowed them to segue into calling Zelensky a dirty Jew sooner. What is he even talking about, man? Like I said, this is, okay, I, I genuinely feel like Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones are both the like forefront runners of nazi esotericism where it's 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 nazism but the point of it is to bury it in so much like 
weird existentialist uh, question everything nonsense that to some people it comes across as, as, as something which it is not, you know? It's, it, I mean, it's always jibber jabber, but like, Jesus. The funny thing is, is that religiously devout people actually, t actually tend to like uh, vehemently deny the existence of aliens because it brings up really inconvenient questions about like divinity because Jesus Christ was a human on earth who died and was resurrected here. So you kind of either have to start making arguments about how the were Jesus had to appear to other planets or other entire species are doomed to hell or they don't even get to participate, which would kind of imply that God doesn't control all living things, which is her like which, which is which is like blasphemy. As oh, generally, religious people don't think like they think we're at the center of the universe, but it do it doesn't matter, right? Like, not one word. So if you're wondering why our country seems so dysfunctional, this is a big part of the reason. Nobody knows what's happening. A small group of people control access to all relevant information. A small group of people, you say. And the rest of us don't know. We're allowed to yap all we want about racism, but go ahead and talk about something that really matters and see what happens. If you keep it up, they'll make you be quiet. Trust us. That's how they maintain control. When Western tourists first started traveling in large numbers to the Soviet Union in the early 1970s, they found that many Russians had a completely warped understanding of the United States. They thought that Americans lived in grinding poverty, in a state of perpetual race war, and were desperate to flee to the freedom and prosperity of the Eastern Bloc. They thought this because that's what they had been told. They had no way to know otherwise. The few Russians who understood what was really going on in the rest of the world had learned about it from listening to shortwave radio broadcasts, sometimes under the covers so the neighbors wouldn't hear. Fifty years later, it is bewildering to consider the ironies here. We're the ones who live in ignorance now. The U.S. government has managed to classify more than a billion so-called public documents. What? None of this makes any sense, dude. Literally, none of it tracks at all. Like... Again, like the only underlying message is wake up sheeple, the Jews are controlling your mind. And I know that, but like to segue from the 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 confusion of Soviets in the 70s to to the it's like it doesn't mean anything. It's completely empty. This is why I say debate is becoming less and less valuable of a tool against conservatives. Not that I don't like doing it when I get a good chance to, but like when they're, when their brains are operating on this level, like no, you you just have to overpower them in in the political system. Like this this like you know, one of the most fundamental parts of being a human is faculties of reason. It's one of the things that separates us from the animals, and I just don't think conservatives have them. I think that on a purely intellectual level, I think that they have more in common with dogs than me, and I refuse to apologize for that when this is their guy. Like, I feel like, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, it's like, here, let's take a look on the other side. What do conservatives like to engage with? What are they interested in looking at? And then I look at this, and it's barking, bark, 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 like, it, it's like, oh, you want me to respect you? Jesus. Conservatives should be f embarrassed because at least if you do believe all the Jews control your mind, wake up shit, say it out loud. I mean, f uh, it's Twitter these days. I genuinely don't even think Tucker Carlson would get in trouble for doing it. I don't know how Tucker's viewership even enjoys him. Yeah. And on a purely aesthetic level, he comes across as like a whiny, like if annoying, privileged, like uh, wears a bow tie to work, which he literally did you know, uh, 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 Ponzi rich boy. Like, he, he doesn't come across as relatable. He comes across kind of like an annoying dork. Very patronizing, too. So at this point, we can't possibly know what our leaders are doing. We're not allowed to know. By definition, that is not a democracy. Yet it's fine with the media. Secrecy is a powerful tool of control. Stop asking how we got so rich. Here's another story about racism. Go eat each other. That's the program. That's how most of us now live here in the United States, manipulated by lies, silenced by taboos. It is unhealthy and it's dehumanizing, and we're tired of it. As of today, we've come to Twitter, which we hope will be the shortwave radio under the blankets. 
We're told there are no gatekeepers here. If that turns out to be false, we'll leave. But in the meantime, we are grateful to be here. We'll be back with much more very soon. Okay, cool. So the first, uh, the first episode was literally just um, the dirty Jews control you and also uh, wake up sheeple. All right.